right, good morning, good morning. It is uh, 2, 2.47 a.m. I'm on my way to the gym right now. And uh, I, I stopped, we got a refrigerator in the in the garage and I stopped, there was some coffee in there and you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, a lot of things start talking to me when I'm in the shower, but sometimes things talk to me while I'm grabbing some coffee out of the refrigerator. And, you know, the, the one thing that kind of really grabbed my mind right now, and I'm being dead serious, like not even a minute ago, not even 120 seconds ago, it said that your destiny, your route in life, your direction is not going to look like other people's. And you're not going to read about it. You're going to catch glimpses of what your destiny looks like in other people's story. But it's not going to be anything like theirs. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, and you know, it's it, there's a lot of cliches that we buy into that uh, we see on the back of bumper stickers and and we just kind of rattle off randomly. If God be for us, who be against us? Uh, God is my light and my savior. Who shall I fear? Um, but besides the, 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 the cliche phrases that people use that you know may or may not even believe that they're 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 true or not your life is ve very well not anything like anybody else's there 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 could be a huge chance and a huge possibility that you're not going to be able to relate or use somebody else's stepping stones as a reference point on how, where, or when you'll get to your destiny. See, I, I, I've noticed something about my life. God doesn't let me get away with too much. He doesn't let me get away with too much. I mean, I break the law and I go to jail. I mean, some people break the law and they, they can get away with that. I can't get away with certain things. I can't go against what has been asked of me. And, and, and the fact that I'm proclaiming and talking about God as much as I, I do, it, it, you know, it, it leads me to believe that he not makes me special -er than other people. but that he has my attention. And that's what he wants. <clears throat> and he's telling me your routing life is going to look different than everybody else's. So stop looking at what everybody else is doing, receiving, going through. It's not gonna look anything like that. So one of those cliches is run your own race. And I'm being told run my own race. I mean, I just went to go grab some coffee, honestly. I just opened up the refrigerator and he just said run your own race. It's, it's, you're gonna, your route is going to be different. It's going to be different. And as much... As much as, as, as I, I, would, I would like... Let me put it like this. I'm past the point of worrying about... I, I, I would say too much of anything. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if the worst has happened that I can really say, man, I'm not worried about nothing. 
because I, I think, you know, the biggest nightmare for any parents is something that happened to their child. I think that would be the biggest nightmare. <laughs> but wave after wave after wave of the wave after wave of things happen. But I know for a fact there's going to be areas of life where I'm not going to I'm going to have some surprises but I'm not going to have some of the tribulations or trials like most people and that's going to be in the area of my kids. And if I had to if I had to eulogize my life then I would have to say that doing right by them and raising them, you know, along with my wife, raising them and, and, and that word raising them is by biblical definition, raise them in the way that they should go so they will not depart. As for those in my house, we will serve the Lord, raising them. Then I would say that that would be my greatest accomplishment. Because I spent, you know, a good portion of yesterday with Silas. He, you know, parent teacher conference. And then me and him just went to his sister's. Just me and him sat down with her teacher. Then me and him went to the book fair. Then me and him went and sat at Starbucks and he read and I read and I was studying and he was studying and then we went to my chiropractor appointment then we went to you know, grab something to eat and we had time to spend together and I got to looking at him and I was recording some video of him and I said my greatest accomplishment is in them Money is a byproduct. But, you know, if I, if I don't ever mention money, it's not because I'm saying money is not important. No, money is very important, but money is, a, is very much a byproduct. Losing weight is not as important as eating correctly or exercising. It is a byproduct of those things. If you find yourself stuck in this revolving wheel, it could be that you're you're identifying with 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 people who are living a life that you may envy. But maybe it's not your purpose. You know, you can do anything. I, I've I've tested the limits of that. The man who ran that marathon in the sub two hour. He tested the limits of anything. The person who climbed, you know, um, K-12 or um, um, Mount Everest, tested. These people test the limits of what's possible. And when you test the limits of what's possible, then you can say, well, I can do anything. But I understand money is a byproduct. But happiness comes in finding your purpose. And understanding. You know, your, your life ain't gonna line up to, to look like mine. You know, I think that's why we pick friends who are similar to us. Because we want something or someone we can relate to that is a is, a, is a, a reminder of who and what we are. So we seek high and low for friends and friendship of people who validate 
the life we live. But just to pick random people and say, hey, I envy your life, that may not be for you. And that could be part of your struggle. I was faced with something a couple days ago. <laughs> and what was funny is it had, uh, you know, I got a call. And, and, and I'll tell you this. I got a call and it came like right on the hills of a million dollars worth of business. Like that quick. It was hilarious. It was hilarious because literally a million dollars worth of business was gone. Um, that was funny. That was funny. And I, and I say that, I say that because I'll, I'll say that because I'll get that back. And then I got a call. Um, you know, Hey, this is something's going to be going down and, uh, you know, you need to figure out a way to fix it ASAP. And it was pretty, it was pretty, it was pretty serious. It was, it was serious. It was, it was important. It was serious. It needed to be addressed. Um, it, it demanded my time at that moment. And I remember, see, it's, it's important to stay inside of your word because inside of your word, there's a bunch of promises that God made to you. Now, if you don't believe in God or, you know, God forbid you don't believe in God, but if you don't believe in God, I guess I ain't really talking to you, but for people who have some type of idea or concept of God and believe he can do all things, there's a promise inside the word. And I stay in that word and I'm constantly keeping myself surrounded because it's the truth. It keeps me grounded and, and it's going to do a whole lot more for me. But I remember something saying that you have already been forgiven. So I was thinking about the call that I had heard. I had thinking about the million dollars in business that had just fallen out. There was something else. There was like two or three other things that would happen. Like literally simultaneously, I was sitting there like, I was just laughing. Like, dude, are you like, okay. But I remember saying, I'm already forgiven. What is there to talk about? It's already forgiven. And now I'm not saying be one of these people that, you know, you get a utility bill that comes in, it's $400, and you just throw it up to God and be like, hey, God, take care of this bill and go back to sleep. Now you'll, you'll wake up and your lights will be turned off. Oh, don't, don't, don't be, don't be an idiot. Because <laughs> just as much as you threw a prayer up to God, he threw an answer back down to you. And that answer is probably going to come with some action you need to take. Hey, call this do this, walk over here, something, not lay back down the bed and do nothing. Faith without action is dead. Faith without works is dead. It's dead. So name it and claim it and you ain't busted a move. That's, eh, well, I, I don't think it's going to work. But what I'm, I'm talking about in the natural and in the spiritual is I'm talking about literally Cause see what happened was, I'll tell you, even with that that million plus of business that fell through, I was like, I'll just find it somewhere else. I threw it up to God and I said, Hey, this is cool. And what he said was go find some more business. The second situation, it had something to do with my license. And and what was crazy is I had to take this nine hour broker clinic. And the, the, the situation that was coming up with my licensing was totally opposed to getting a broker's license or, you know, getting taking this nine hour course. But God said, go take that course. Matter of fact, go study for that test. Matter of fact, double down on your efforts. You're going to get it. It's going to happen. Don't worry about what the man is saying. So I went into action. I started making calls. Next thing I know, somebody called me. Hey, I need to sell my home. Just remember this. 
all things do work together for those who believe in God. God is a good God is a good thing to believe in. God is a good thing to trust in. Um, God is a very God is a is an asset. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. But just remember you're you're very unique. And when God talks to you, I, th I think it's wise. I think it's very wise. I think it's very wise to listen. Because you're, you're probably facing struggle because you keep going against what he's asking you to do.